Medical device giant Boston Scientific just announced acquisition of yet another company this year, Farapulse, for $295 million. Let's break down if this was a good idea right now. Hi, and welcome to another Biofilm News episode. My name is Pavel Rajov. Thank you for everyone who tuned in and watched my live episode about Adohelm. And this was a totally audio fiasco on my part, but it's all growing pains of an amateur YouTuber. So here on this channel, I share PhD tips, interview guests from biopharma industry and occasionally cover news. So today is the latter, but please take a look at other videos on my channel and subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. Now let's discuss Boston Scientific. They are a local, well, local to me anyway, company with a modest valuation of $62 billion. Originally starting as a medical device company in 1979, it set itself on a path to acquire what looks like a substantial number of promising medical device companies over the next several decades. The main targets for acquisition for Boston Scientific were companies in the cardiovascular space and other companies specializing in manufacturing of interventional devices in oncology, urology, and other adjacent sectors. In this year alone, news broke about acquisition of Preventus Solutions for $1.2 billion, a company that specializes in mobile cardiac health solutions, and Lumenis, with its broad portfolio of laser-based technologies for various diseases and clinical indications, for $1 billion. That's a serious push that underscores their apparent approach to business, or at least that's how I perceive it, buying smart and keep on growing. And it seems to be working out well so far. Now let's turn our attention to Ferropulse, which became a target for latest acquisition by Ever Hungry for New Deals Boston Scientific. Ferropulse is a nine-year-old company that manufactures pulsed field ablation devices, or PFAs, for treatment of patients with atrial fibrillation. Let's break it down a bit more, just to get a little bit more context. Ablation devices or devices that help restore heart rhythm are obviously very important, considering a backdrop of higher and higher number of patients with various forms of heart disease, not only in the US, but also around the world. According to MedDevice Online, it's a 30 plus billion dollar per year market in the US alone, and that was in 2015. Now let's talk about established players in this field and then go back to Ferropulse to discuss what makes them special, particularly in the eyes of someone like Boston Scientific. But before doing that, I'd really appreciate if you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm if you find this content interesting and consider subscribing and sharing this video with your network. This would really help me out. Thank you. And here's a picture of a cute fish as a token of my appreciation. So based on my research, I found that there are two main types of ablation devices radiofrequency ablation and cryoablation. While the first is using heat, the second is using cold temperatures to destroy heart tissues where cardiac arrhythmia occurs. This procedure is done by inserting a catheter into a blood vessel. Both types of devices I found to be beneficial and report high success rate, and companies like Medtronic, a big player in this space, as well as several others already entered this market over the last decade, securing the market for themselves. Now this is where Farapulse comes into play. Farapulse, in contrast with other makers, uses an electric field to generate electroporation of cardiac tissue, or simply put, a localized tissue-sensitive destruction that does not rely on temperature, which obviously cannot discriminate between healthy and sick tissue. This is one major area where Boston Scientific sees value in acquisition of Farapulse. The PFA technology is currently being tested in clinical trial in the US and has previously shown efficacy in multiple European clinical trials, according to Farapulse's website. So let's take a look at other aspects of this acquisition to determine if Boston Scientific made a right choice here. First, it did not just decide to acquire Farapulse this year. In fact, earlier last year, it entered into an exclusive option to purchase agreement and since then held a 27% stake in the company. I would imagine as part of that agreement, they already evaluated data from previous European clinical trials and were anticipating commencement of a clinical trial in the US, which is a key market to capture, obviously. This means that Boston Scientific looked at the data and was very impressed with PFA's efficacy as compared to standard of care offers from competitors, and that's why it secured an exclusive option to acquire, which makes sense from a long-term business standpoint. Looking at history of previous acquisitions by Boston Scientific, exclusivity to purchase method is not new to them and has previously worked for them in the past. I think it makes sense 
for smart business decision making, if you have a solid understanding of disruptive technologies in your area and you diversify your portfolio with multiple offerings, all in all to minimize risk going forward. Additionally, if you look at the size of the acquisition deal at just shy of $300 million, it's a far smaller investment as compared with previous two from this year. And it probably makes sense to acquire now after the clinical trial in the US has already commenced. With more positive outlook at recruitment for clinical trials now, as a result of more and more people getting vaccinated, they expect to see how PFA technology stacks up against standard of care in the US. And they're clearly confident that it would show clinical benefit. In fact, this is already backed by the fact that Firepulse was awarded an FDA breakthrough designation for this device in 2019. So to sum it all up, it does make total sense for Boston Scientific to acquire Firepulse on the merits of the close technology fit between two companies, where Boston Scientific would strengthen its electrophysiology product portfolio, while Ferropulse gains financial support and backing of a much larger company that has a successful history of prior acquisitions. Other merits are clearly based on positive data from European trials and the fact that this market is going to continue to grow in the future. Even though they were first to market devices from competitors, the fundamentally different technology from Ferropulse may give it an edge and unique positioning both from clinical and frankly marketing perspective. So that's it. If you found this breakdown informative, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. Also, let me know down in the comment section if you think that this acquisition makes sense and your suggestions for other recent biopharma and medtech news that you'd like me to cover. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.